Can't they even do that? David Carter, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, you've been out promoting a film called Outrage. Yes. Uh, I think one of the people asked me how to celebrate Stonewall, and there's a film that's not gotten nearly the attention it deserves called Outrage, which is about how some of the, you know, people who are most stopping and actually not only stopping the progress of the gay rights movement but hurting the gay rights movement are, in fact, closeted homosexuals, mostly Republican, but some Democrats. And I think uh, I'd love for people to, to try, try, please try to see this film. Uh, you know, if you can't, it's not showing in a theater, you can see, request it, you know, order it uh, online, Netflix, whatever. But please see this film. I think it's very important for, for all people. Pride marches this weekend all over the country. Uh, and the world. And the world. Where will you be? Uh, I'm going to be doing this as much as possible because I think, you know, this kind of activism is the best way to, to celebrate the event. Historian David Carter, author of Stonewall, The Riots That Spark the Gay Revolution, as we turn back now to David Isay's documentary, Remembering Stonewall. It was produced on the 20th anniversary of the uprising. This weekend is the 40th anniversary. This excerpt features the voices of New York Police Deputy Inspector Seymour Pine, Joan Nestle, the founder of the Lesbian Herstory Archives, transgender activist Sylvia Rivera, and others. It begins with Jean Harwood. When Stonewall happened, uh, Bruce and I were still in the closet uh, where, where we had been for nearly 40 years. But we realized that this, this was a, a, a tremendous thing that had happened at, at Stonewall, and it gave us a feeling that we were not going to be remaining closeted for very much longer. And soon thereafter, we did come out of the closet. My name is Ginny Puzo. In uh, 1969, I was uh, in the convent, and um, when Stonewall hit the press, it hit me with a bolt of lightning. It was as if I had uh, an incredible release um, of my own outrage at having to sequester so much of my life. I made way my way down. I seem to recall um, in subsequent nights being uh, down on the, you know, kind of just in the periphery looking, observer, clearly an observer, clearly longing to have that courage to come out. And um, it was a matter, as I recall, it was only a matter of weeks before I left the convent and um, started a new life. I'm Henry Baird. In 1969, I was in the U.S. Army, a Specialist three stationed at Long Bin Post near Saigon in Vietnam. I remember I was having lunch in the Army mess, reading the Armed Forces news summary of the day. And there was a short paragraph describing a riot led by homosexuals in Greenwich Village against the police. And my heart was filled with joy. I thought about what I had read frequently, but I had no one to discuss it with. And secretly within myself, I decided that when I came back stateside, if I should survive to come back stateside, I would come out as a gay person, and I did. For those of us in public morals, after the uh, Stonewall incident, things were completely changed from what they had previously been. They, they suddenly were not submissive anymore. They now suddenly had gained a, a new type of uh, courage. And it seemed as if they didn't care anymore about whether their identities were, were made known. We were now dealing with human beings. Today, I'm a 38-year-old drag queen. I can keep my long hair, I can pluck my eyebrows, and I can work wherever the hell I want. <laughs> and I'm not going to change for anybody. If I change, then I feel that, I've, that I'm losing what 1969 brought into my life. And that was to be totally free. How can I? An excerpt of Dave Isay's documentary, Remembering Stonewall. You can hear and watch the whole documentary at our website, democracynow.org. Thanks to Haney Massoud and Nicole Salazar, Nicole Martin, Steve Martinez for adapting this for television. If you want to see the video uh, images, the photos, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. And thanks to the New York Public Library for some of those images in their upcoming exhibition, 1969, The Year of Gay Liberation. This is Democracy Now! 
four decades after Stonewall. Where is the transgender community? Well, earlier this week, the New York Times reported the Obama administration's begun drafting guidelines that would, for the first time, protect transgender federal employees from workplace discrimination. Massachusetts Congressman Barney Frank has also just reintroduced a bill that would prohibit workplace discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. The inclusion of gender identity in this version of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, is seen as an important step by transgender activists. ENDA was introduced in 1994 and first included protections for the transgender community in 2007. It did not pass then, and a subsequent version that lacked the protections based on gender identity passed the House but was not taken up by the Senate. Well, here in New York, today is the fourth annual Trans Day of Action for Social and Economic Justice, a rally at the Stonewall all in is planned for this afternoon to, quote, let the world know that on the 40th anniversary of Stonewall, the rebellion is not over. I'm joined now by transgender activist Maya Leilani Vasquez. She works with the Trans Justice Program at the Audre Lorde Project, one of the groups organizing today's march. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. Explain trans. Um, well, trans uh, gender, I, I'm going to stay on the I statement. Transgender to me is uh, 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 basically, uh, 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 gender identity, uh, basically living uh, or being born uh, biologically, what, uh, who you are, either male or female, but uh, physically or mentally, I mean, mentally feeling, uh, you know, uh, the opposite gender. And so then you, you tend to try to find what trans is, because it really is a tra umbrella term. So you're born as a man, but you live your life as a woman. I was born a boy. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it was to be a man. I transitioned at the age of 16. And what was it like to transition? Um, well, it was very hard. Um, I was very feminine at a very young age. I had to deal with discrimination at the hands of ACS uh, uh, in the foster care system. It was in the 90s, so I was subjected to psycho uh, treatment. Um, and then down the line, understanding and coming to terms with myself, I f finally understood the, the, that I was trans and had to uh, basically uh, become who I was in order to survive and feel that I could make it within society. How did you find the strength to uh, live out your identity? My mom uh, was always around and, and still around and always told me to be proud and keep my head up and keep smiling and that uh, being who I am is... Uh, you know, the best thing and keep it moving. And Talk about this day, this transgender day of action. What does it mean? What are you doing? Well, this is our fifth annual Trans Day of Action, and we're actually, um, we're very proud because I, we have uh, been trying to contact the Human Resources of Administration, which is our welfare agency. And um, we've, uh, contacted them for three years straight. Last year was our fourth annual, and we were, were marching. We sent out a letter three months prior, and in, in a week before, they asked us not to, to protest or, or do any type of demonstration. And we told them that we couldn't stop it, and then we would, would continue, but would love to continue talking. So right now, we're demanding, uh, you know, a policy revision uh, f for, uh, uh, you know, trans clients who are accessing HRA, who, who are currently, like, just being discriminated, calling Sir, calling them out of their gender preferred pronoun, and, and it's just not what they're, uh, pref you know, looking at. You know, if you see a woman uh, in front of you, or you see someone presenting a woman in front of you, then you should say she, because that's the respectable thing to do. What is um, the, your focus when it comes to police and educating police? What are the issues you have with police? Um, I, personally, it's searching. Uh, you know, I prefer a female to search me because I do prefer, like, I, I am a woman. That's how I feel. Um, it, you know, I, as long as you talk to me in, 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 in a, in a pro, you know, proper tone and ask me questions, you get, you'll get something out of me. If you're coming to me in a nasty uh, attitude, then you're, you're possibly going to get you know, me ignoring you or, or, like, you know, let's running, whatever you have to do, you know. And, and you tend to be uh, profiled when you're out in the village, uh, you know, just for being trans. Uh, you know, I, 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 I constantly get stopped and asked if I'm loitering with the intent of prostitution, and <laughs> you know. Um, LGBT. T is the trans. Where do you fit into the gay community? I don't feel like I do, honestly. I, I, I feel that um, 
I just feel that uh, there, it's a family, it's a comfort area, it's outside the box, and because the trans community, it's it's outside the box or in a different, uh, you know, world to folks that we just thrown into the LGBT community. But I think we have uh, different issues. It's uh, interesting that the trans community was so pivotal in Stonewall 40 years ago. It's not talked about as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 when I hear, when I think of Stonewall, I really think of all the the, the great things that the trans and, and um, gender nonconforming community has done, and and where we are today is so far behind. Uh, you know, you have so many uh, different. Uh, you know, movements and, and laws that are passed, and, and we, were, we were just so left behind. And, and uh, the employment.